I've lost everybody. Hello, everyone. We should be Hi, live. Everyone. We'll just check that we're live. We are live. It's are coming live. up. Yay! We are live. We are live. Happy Monday. It's the Monday morning shakedown. Shakey, shakey, shakey. Okay, over to you, Carol. Hello everyone. Yes, sorry, I forgot. I'm, I'm kicking off today. <laughs> Hello everyone and hi Julie, who's watching us. Julie Brown, one of our wonderful members who we will be interviewing in a couple of weeks. So hi Julie and thank you for making it today. And also Suzanne Dintner is also watching. Hi Suzanne. Suzanne is uh, based in Germany. So we definitely want to get you on our interview list as well, Suzanne. And the lovely Liz... I'm not going to say your surname, Liz, because I know you like to change it around a bit. So I, I, I want to leave that open for everyone. So hi, Liz. Uh, thank you as well for joining us. So I just thought we would start off with what we're going to be covering today. Uh, a little agenda so we all know what's going on. So uh, first of all, we're just going to introduce ourselves. Uh, we've got our lovely guest today, Kari. I'm going to let her introduce herself in a moment. And then we are going to talk about the club for, you know, probably about 60 seconds because the doors are closing tomorrow. So um, if you want to join, this is the great time to join everyone. Then we are going to integrate, <clears throat> I mean, interview Kari. We don't <laughs> interrogate anyone. And then finally, I'm just going to give you a few little tips about following up on your uh, meetings and sales. Okay, so Kari, oh, well, let me say, everybody hopefully knows me. Uh, well, I shouldn't really say that. There are probably people watching this. Well, let's hope there are people watching this who don't know me because that's a good sign. So I'm Carol Bernadette Boskurt. I run the Blueprint Group Practice. <laughs> um, and Nita and I are business partners for my Entrepreneurs Club. And we are excited about our club every single day. Uh, we have got the wonderful Kari Taylor, who's a reflexologist. So Kari, please introduce yourself. Yes, good morning. My name is Kari Taylor. I'm a reflexologist. I do do a few other bits and bobs as well. But reflexology is my main passion. I'm based in Charleston, St. Peter in South Box, And I'm very excited to be here in the morning. Brilliant. Thank you, Kari. And I just also want to do a shout out to Sarah Lawrence, who's one of our newest members. And um, I met Sarah over a year ago when she was training to become a life coach. So I'm so delighted, Sarah, that you've joined my Entrepreneurs Club. You're going to get so much out of it. And we're going to have great discussions and really help and support you on your journey. We're really excited about it. So Anita, please introduce yourself. Yes. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to the live this morning for our sixth episode of the Monday Morning Shakedown. My name is Anita Wall, and um, I am love probably like to be called the techie queen in a little way, especially inside the club. I love doing all the tech stuff, and um, I'm really excited about bringing you a little bit of info about my entrepreneurs club. So Carol and I launched the club at the beginning of September and we are going to close the doors tomorrow for a few weeks so that we can nurture the members that are inside, get to know them a little bit better and explain all the ins and outs of how the club works. And we would love you to join us inside the club. So what makes the club special? Well, we've looked at lots of membership groups around and we've noticed that although they are really good and they share lots of trainings they don't really touch on some of the techie side and some of the networking sides that we're bringing into the club so in our club we have a monthly success collection which is where we're bringing lots of trainings which will help you to enhance what you're doing. So it will help you move your business forward. And one of the things that really makes us stand out is the techie stuff, because we actually show you how to use the tech, not just, oh, you've got to do this, but actually take you through the steps in mostly video to show you exactly how to get from A to B successfully so that you're more confident, you're more eager, and you're really, really inspired to go out there and do things. So we would love for you to join us. Our opening price is only £15 a month. So you pay £15 for the first month and then you only pay £15 for the consecutive months for as long as you're a member. So no matter what we do with the price, you will only pay £15. 
So I think if you want to check that out, we'll put the link in the live. There's also, if you check out our story for today, we've got lots of information in our story about joining the club today. So um, my printer's just started completely on its own because I'm the only one in the house. So I'm a bit weird. Oh, a bit weird. <laughs> So if you hear techie, 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 I'm not phased by that, apart from the fact that it might be a ghost. Um, so if you hear my printer go off, don't worry. And if you hear my dogs bark, don't worry as well. Carrie's apparently got a little doggy around as well. So you might get a little bit of extra audience participation. Mm. That's so wonderful, Anita. Thank you. That's wonderful. And just to um, also, just to add to what you said, you know, the tech thing is a really big thing, but we also, in our success collections, once a month, we all cover an element of marketing or sales or social media or strategy. And uh, we have a call every Thursday at 2 p.m. And that's where you can jump on and ask any questions and we completely tailor it to your needs. So uh, that makes it really good. And the great thing that we're doing here is we're building a community. So what we're not doing is just saying, OK, well, this month, this is what we're going to do you know, because we've already got that prepared, which we did maybe two years ago. So let's just bring it in and spruce it up a bit. We're not doing that. Everything that we're creating is because it's what our members are asking for. So we haven't stockpiled on anything. We want this to be as real as possible. So any of the challenges or struggles that you are experiencing, you can come in and say, look, I don't know how to do this. And if it's big enough, we will make a su success collection or do a tech clinic on it. So isn't that just wonderful? OK, so enough about us. Me, 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 me. So me, now me. what we're going to do is we are going to talk to the wonderful Kari. Now, Kari is one of our founding members and Kari is a reflexologist. So I don't know, Kari, how many people watching this, you know, will know about reflexology and everything like this. But let's start off with why don't you tell us your story on how you got to become a reflexologist? I'd be very happy to, Carol. Um, it is kind of a long and winding road, actually. Um, 20 years ago, I met my husband. Uh, I was working in the Caribbean, in the Cayman Islands. Mm. I was a finance manager for a satellite launching company. It was a new company. It was all kind of busy, 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 all with numbers, which I really enjoyed. Anyway, met my husband, had three children. We moved continents a couple of times, moved countries three times. Mm. I couldn't combine working with all of that. So I stopped working. And then a few years ago, I wanted to kind of get back into doing something but I didn't want to work for my head I wanted to work from my heart mm. and when I was pregnant with all of my three children when I got to month seven I had a really sore back and I persevered through it with number one and number two and then when we got to number three I thought oh you know what I just can't bear this because I could barely walk and I had two mm. young children and I just couldn't couldn't mm. bear it so I asked my mid midwife, you know, what can I do? Because there's a limit to what kind of treatments you can have. There's a limit to the medication you can have. And to be honest, I didn't really want to be popping pills when I was pregnant. Yeah. So she said, well, actually, the only thing I can kind of recommend that you might try is reflexology. And I kind of thought, well, what the, what the heck's that? I had no idea what it was. Um, but there was a lady down in my village who did reflexology. So I thought, well, you know what, that's worth a go. And I went along not having any idea I mean I think I think I knew it was going to be my feet which kind of suited me because I was seven months pregnant and feel a bit sort of big and lumpy and she did one treatment which kind of felt a bit weird uh having never had it before but not uncomfortable I slept incredibly well afterwards and my back eased which which for me was just a miracle mm -hmm. so that was hang on my son is now 13 so yeah so that was about 12, 12 and 13 years ago so then when I decided to retrain or get out there and start working again and doing something from the heart I decided that I would train in I did massage first I did anatomy and physiology and then I went on to do reflexology which is my definitely my favorite ther therapy mm. so Kari for those people out there who are not familiar with reflexology can you tell us a bit about it 
Cool. Yeah, sure. I mean, in reflexology, we believe that you can map your body onto your feet. You can mm -hmm. actually map it onto your hands as well. Mm -hmm. Some people do facial reflexology. Some people actually do oh. curricular reflexology, mm -hmm. i.e. on your ears. I've never kind of trained in the facial or the, the ear one, but I do. I can do hands and feet and I mm -hmm. prefer feet. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there are different theories about how reflexology actually works. But, you know, you've got thousands of nerve endings in your feet. So we believe that by treating, you know, your, your feet, pressing different points on your feet in a very particular way, you are actually treating your whole body on a physical and an emotional level. I know mm -hmm. it sounds a bit woo-woo, but it, believe me, it does really work really well. <laughs> yeah. Anita, would you like to say anything? Ask Kari a question. Yeah, please, if I can. Um, so how do you think you could help the stress business owner um, relax and um, re-engage and recharge using reflexology? Because obviously as entrepreneurs, a lot of us are under a lot of stress running our own businesses and um, making you know, an income for our families and things. And stress, I mean, the area of stress and women and entrepreneurs is an area that I'm really passionate about and interested in. And I mean, there are millions of work days lost each year due to people having to have time with work with stress. I mean, and one thing is the financial implications, but for me, I, the important, most important thing is actually how you feel. So for me, reflexology is a way of just taking time out for yourself and I think you know you're showing yourself that you're valuing yourself and I think that's a really important first step mm -hmm. and then it's a balancing treatment you know it will balance your hormonal systems it, it you can work on the muscles in the body you can work on an emotional level but it's really about breaking that cycle of stress which kind of just goes turns round and round so I think it's that important first step of taking time out for yourself, nurturing yourself and, and actually valuing yourself as well. Because mm. I think that's really important. I think as women, we very often undervalue ourselves. We don't take time out for ourselves. We're everything to everybody else and we come last. Right, mm. that's really interesting. And how long does a normal treatment take? Like from when you, they arrive at your studio? Well, the actual hands-on treatment is probably about 50 minutes. I normally say it's an hour because uh, you always, you know, talk about how you do like a bit of an assessment of how they're feeling that day. The first treatment is normally quite a lot longer because I go through a health questionnaire just to find out about them, you know, their physical status and emotional status as well, uh, just to make sure that there aren't any contraindications to treatment or whether I might want to um, seek their GP's approval. But a, a normal treatment, hands-on time, is about 50 minutes. <clears throat> wow, that's really good. And just a quick one to the audience that have joined us. If any of you have actually undergone reflexology or you have a question for Carrie, please pop them in the comments below and we'll answer them um, a bit later on after we've interviewed her. Now, Carrie, what happens if somebody comes to you and they've got ticklish feet? <laughs> <laughs> Well, to be honest with you, it depends on how ticklish they are. I do have people who come and say that they either don't like having their feet touched mm. or not sure, or that they are very ticklish. And what I usually do is that I have a firm touch so that they don't feel I'm just kind of fiddling around with their feet. But it's having a firm but comfortable touch, but not painful. And I have so far found that most people tolerate it really well. My daughter's got quite ticklish feet, so I have done a bit of practicing on her. <laughs> Do you get any clients who just start laughing and can't stop? It has happened. It has <laughs> happened. And, you know, you just got to laugh and go along with the flow. But, you know, eventually that they do relax. And I do get quite a few people um, snoring in my chair. Really? really? Gosh, that might be me. When they wake themselves up and go, oh, was that me? It's like, oh, well, yes, I think it might have been. But it just goes to show how relaxing it can be and that, you know, they allow themselves to relax. And I think if you allow yourself to relax and you allow yourself to receive the treatment, you get an awful lot more out of it. Yeah. Anita? Yep. So, um, Carrie, how important is it to look after your feet? Because obviously you're saying that the nerve endings in the feet are mapped to the rest of your body. But most of us just sort of like walk around, put our shoes on, socks on, don't even think about our feet. Occasionally get them seen to before you go on holiday to have your nails painted and things. But actually, how important is it for your overall well-being to look after your feet? 
Well, I think it's really important. I mean, I do see an awful lot of feet and they vary hugely from beautifully looked after feet with no hard skin on at all. And, you know, their nails look lovely, no corns or calluses or anything like that. And at the other end of the scale, you have people who obviously don't look after their feet at all. Sometimes that can be an indication that they're not looking after themselves either. Mm. And I have had people who have seen, because I usually use oil or I might use a cream when I'm treating their feet. So then they can actually see that after the treatment, you know, the physical appearance of the feet yeah. is actually better as well. And they kind of thought, yeah. well, actually, no, I think I want to look after my feet a bit better. And then it kind of becomes looking after the person as well. So I think moisturizing your feet really well, actually being a bit thoughtful about what you wear on your feet, because a lot of us wear ill-fitting shoes. Um, but, you know, I'm not really a foot care specialist. I think if you no. want kind of any more kind of technical advice, I think they would be the best person to, to ask. But we underrate our feet, I think, hugely. Mm. Mm. So Carrie, you're based, if, if people want to connect with you, how can they do that? Well, I'm quite active on Facebook. I have a Facebook page called Kari Taylor Reflexology. So people can connect with me on there. They can message me. I also have a website, which is www.kari.taylor.co.uk. And obviously I also have my mobile as well, which I think people can find on my page if that's okay. And what, <laughs> but, of course, and what's your email address if people want to email you? It's uh, kari at kari.taylor.co.uk. Okay, so if people, and you're based in Gerrard's Cross. Yes, I am. I'm in Chalfour St. Peter, which is kind of the next village along from Gerrard's Cross, yes. and that's in South Buckinghamshire. So if anybody's listening to this and they live near the Gerrard's Cross stroke Chalfour St. Peter area, and you want to connect with Kari to go along, even if it's just to treat yourself, to have an experience of reflexology, you can go to Kari's page, Facebook page, which is Kari Taylor Reflexology. You could go to her website, which is www.karitaylor.com. .co.uk. .co.uk. And you could email her as well. You could message her on her page. Okay. I put the email into the chat already. Oh, so email, which yeah. great, because Anita has done that. Yeah. So that is amazing. Now, for those people, Kari, who, because, you know, we've got some members and people listening who, you know, Gerald's Cross and Chalfont St. Peter is not on their doorstep. They're either, either living in another part of the UK or with some of our members, they're living in different countries, different continents as well. <laughs> So what would you say, you know, we're coming into winter and I have to admit the majority of times I'm always in my trainers. You know, it's this athleisure look that we're going for. <laughs> so um, what would you say? Could you give some tips for people who are listening so that perhaps maybe if they haven't really thought about looking after their feet, they could maybe start to do some things that would just sort of like take care of their feet a bit better and hopefully make them feel a lot more relaxed well you're thinking if you're not going for reflexology treatment but yeah. you can just do it at home well i would recommend having a foot bath in some mm. kind of lukewarm water not too hot our feet are actually a bit more sensitive uh, than we think so if you test the water with your hands and feel that it's all right it might actually be too hot for your feet mm. but a, a foot soak uh, maybe and then um a scrub to kind of get rid of the hard skin and actually give your feet a really good um, massage with, you know, with a good cream. And if you have a cream that's quite um, oily, then you might want to actually, if you're doing this last thing at night, you might actually want to put on a pair of cotton socks. So mm -hmm. you don't get the cream on your bed, but it gives the, the cream a good chance to absorb into your feet. But I think, I think moisturizing is really important. And have you, um, have you ever done any videos to show people how to do that? Just wondering whether that might be something that you could probably 
Yeah, no, that's a really good idea, Anita. No, I've never thought to do that. And actually, you know what? You can actually do a bit of reflexology on yourself. It's easier to do on hands, but more effective to do on feet. So yeah, I could probably combine that with maybe a few pointers on, on, you know, if you are feeling extra stressed that day or you're struggling with your sleep, a few pointers as to, you know, which are the most effective points. Well, I'd love to have a go at that because I'd love to... um... And especially I could teach my hubby how to do it. And then he could sort of like massage my feet. Oh, so nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so cool. So and have you think... ever had, oh, sorry. Oh, no, go I ahead, go ask, ahead. I was just going to ask Harry, have you ha- ever had any famous feet under your care? No, not yet. Not yet. Oh, but I just did, want to say, that if there's anybody watching who is, you know, too far away to have a treatment with me and you do want to try reflexology, a lot of reflexologists are members uh, of the AOR. That's the Association of Reflexologists. So if okay. you want somebody that you know is kind of tra- trained to high standards and fully insured, and that's a good place to go and look for a therapist. Oh, okay, because mm. Julie's just said she wishes she was closer. So um, Julie's in Peterborough around that area. So um, so yeah, so that's a really good tip to to speak because they'll be properly qualified and... Um, up to the standards and things yeah so that's a really good tip thanks for that Carrie yeah qualified and insured both and and Liz has said reflexology is very effective helps my back and energizes my whole system so thank you Liz is Liz one of your clients Carrie she is she is Ah. (laughs) that's what we like lots of nice support for everyone and um Suzanne Dintner has said love it already it's a no-brainer that's really cool yeah so what does your week look like ahead Kari my week is kind of filling up with treatments um I've got some the evening slots actually go quite quickly because normally I can fit in one maybe two and because a lot of my clients work then the evening slots are the ones that go first I do also work on Saturdays for those that don't want to do it in the evenings and I also work uh in the day from about 10 30 onwards for those that work for themselves can fit in the treatments uh, when they want but evening slots are definitely the most popular because people have the treatment and they go home and they chill which yeah makes a lot of sense to me yeah. yeah and do you do you do the treatments in your own like um studio or do you go to people's homes as well do you do a bit mixture no i only treat from my treatment room at home oh, okay i do occasionally treat people who are very unwell and in that case, I um, I do go to their house. Mm. Mm. I suppose that you can have a really nice ambience in your treatment room because it'll all be set up ready. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah very exciting. It's, it's my special room. Nobody else is allowed in there, not even the dogs. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's a bit difficult to do reflexology on paws. They've only got little feet. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and that's well, the dogs come in and they start licking the client. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> not sure people would like that but they've actually got quite ticklish pads as well dogs do so but they do like a foot massage mm, that's good yeah and Suzanne just said she wondered she's never tried reflexology and she's wondering whether she'd be one of the gigglers I think I'd be one of the gigglers as well because whenever I have my nails done and I get them to do like the pedicure and things I'm always like holding on to the arms of the seat oh, because no. I just <laughs> yeah I am because they're doing something normally that kills me you yeah know? it's just that first like you say it's that first reaction because after you sort of like relax your mind and go okay it's not that bad it it you can you can just about cope with it and I think like you say when you press harder it takes away that ticklish um aspect to to that sort to that sort of treatment because yeah. it's more um zoning in on the points and things so that's really really interesting actually so so um thanks for that Carrie that's it's been really informative yeah thank you for coming on and and being one of our members who's talking we've just had Gail Morgan has joined us I just want to shout out to Gail welcome Gail she's again one of our newest members so Gail if you want to be interviewed at all on our Monday morning shakedown let us know because it's all about promoting our members Mm -hmm. So, and Anita, should we just go around the table and talk about what we've been doing at the weekend? Because I know you had quite a lovely weekend. Me? Yes, you. <clears throat> I did. Well, um, what did I do? Um, Saturday, I took my daughter shopping. 
So we had a really nice time at Westfield. She's off to New York on Friday with the school for a week. So she's going to New York and um, Washington and doing all the sites and things. So we had a bit of a mummy daughter um, shopping day, although my husband did tag along because poor old, um, he's the only man in our house. I've got, there's five women and then one man. So he does have to, but he loves shopping. So that's fine. He doesn't mind doing the shopping. Um, and then yesterday I went and test drove a car because when I started my business, one of my big goals was to buy a new car and um, I'm just about there. So I'm picking it up today at 4 p.m. So I will go, I will share it later, but I will tell you that I'm getting a Mini Cooper Sport Convertible. Wrong time of the year, but I can put a woolly hat on. I don't care. Woolly hat, scarf, jacket. <laughs> when Anita told me, I goes, we've got a sports car. We've got a sports car. <laughs> yeah, what's mine is yours. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited because it's just gonna be, oh, can't wait. I've always wanted a Mini. Um, when I first passed my test, the car that I always wanted was a Mini. And I always have a picture, like you know, like you do when you're a teenager with a sports car that you always want. And I know it's not like a Ferrari or anything like that, but it was just, I always wanted a Mini. I just like the idea of the little sporty, quite, they're quite individual, they're quite unique. And this one's um, dark, it's like a gloss black with a red sporty stripe on, and then it's got the Union Jack on the hood. So um, I can't wait. I'm going to get it at four o'clock this afternoon. Um, Julie has just said, wow, Anita, that's amazing. I know, it's so it's exciting. exciting. It's I so am exciting. Look, I'm glowing now. Um, <laughs> it's just not, you know, it's hard work and it's your entrepreneurial life. I set a goal and I've been working hard and I'll have to keep working hard. So, um, so yeah, I'm really excited about that. So watch this yeah. space and share some pictures later. What about you, Kari? What uh, have you been doing this weekend? I can't follow that Anita but oh, I'm, yes you can. <laughs> I'm with you on the car front I'm really excited for you and it's lovely to be able to buy something that's actually something that you want and is for you and it isn't like how many kids do I need to fit in and then I've got to fit in the dogs yeah. and all that. that mini is your car isn't it no, yeah it is it is mine and I think that's the problem we've had well it's not a problem that it, with four daughters I've always had a people carrier yep. or a sensible car um so now I can still fit two in the back if I need to but most of the time it's going to be me and a girlfriend um probably Carol quite a lot and <laughs> whoever else wants to come with me um and I think um what I'll do because I, I quite like giving my cars an, uh, an identity so maybe later on in the club once I've got it we'll ask the members to come up with a name that'd be so, fantastic yeah anyway, all the cars in our house have names Oh, do they? Yeah. My current one doesn't actually, but my previous one, she was called uh, Sonia. If anybody wa watches The Real Housewives of New York, which is one of my guilty pleasures, there's a lady in there called Sonia. So my car used to be called Sonia. Oh. So she's the one that liked to drink a lot. <laughs> and she was always after the men. Well, she still is. She stopped drinking now. But yeah, I watched the... Okay, well, you know the Sonia. New York City. New York she's City, Beverly Hills. Lisa Vanderpump is my fave. Yeah, no, I watch that as well. <laughs> but anyway, you were asking about my weekend, and actually, I've got something that ties in with your mini. He did have a completely different mini. I don't know whether you remember that, Mr. Bean. Oh yes, mini. Anyway, on Friday night, I took the two children that are still living at home. We went to see. Um, oh, what's in his name? Not uh, Ryan Atkinson. Thank you very much. Yes, you know when he's uh, the agent. Yeah, he's he's like 007, isn't he? Yeah, some some oh. other English. Oh, my mind's gone. That's completely. it, English. Johnny English. Johnny English. Went to see the third Johnny English film, and it's really funny. I mean, it's, they are funny, aren't they? I mean, in many ways, it's it's stupid, but you know, he. I just find him really funny, and all three of us were laughing our heads off. So it was just a really nice evening out with the kids. Mm. Um, yeah, and laughter is always really good, isn't it? Especially when you do it with the kids, it's always good to have a good old laugh. We met um, who was that lady we met that does laughter yoga? Karen. Oh, Karen Puttick. Yeah, oh. so you have to have a little go at that Amazing. at some point. So Karen Puttick is a. Uh, I met her actually at Kari's networking. So mm -hmm. Kari runs a networking group uh, for Mums Unlimited. So Mums Unlimited is owned by Debbie Gilbert. She runs. A number of groups. She's amazing. She also runs Best Businesswoman Awards, and that's uh, an award. It's a national award which runs once a year, and I mean it's in the fourth year now. 
and she gets like hundreds of applications. I mean, it's so successful. And she started it from nothing, you know, Ooh. and she just got on and did it. She's so amazing. And um, so I met Karen Puttick at Mums Unlimited Amersham, which is a great group to go to. Again, which runs. Hmm. yeah, which Kari runs. Again, if you live locally, I'd really recommend you go to it. It is now permanently on my list to go to. They're really wonderful women there. And one of the ladies was Karen Puttick. Now, there's one of my friends, Caroline Rice, told me she'd gone to a laughter yoga coach. And I thought, wouldn't that be great to get a laughter yoga coach in for my event, which I run three times a year. It's a networking event called Rich, Hot and Spiritual. And um, of course, you know, I didn't have her details or anything. And I went to Kari's networking group and we were talking and she's so full of energy and bouncy. And then I said to her, you're not the laughter yoga coach, are you? She went, yes. Yeah. So hopefully she's going to come to the next Rich, Hot and Spiritual. And Ooh. we're going to do a session then, which will be really good. Yeah. So my weekend, my big thing was... On Friday, as I mentioned, I run Rich, Hot and Spiritual and it was the last event of the year. So it's the third time I ran it this year. And uh, it was a really, really great event. We had our speaker, Sashka. Oh, that's a bit hard for me to say. Uh, <laughs> flying from Austria uh, to talk about branding and stepping into your leadership as a female business owner. And she was amazing. And uh, we also had the lovely Nick Blanchard, who was one of our sponsors. You know, we can't run the event without our sponsors, but we it's not like a normal networking event where it's just like two hours long. It's four hours long and we have a three course meal and we have cocktails because I love cocktails. So why not? So that was uh, really, really good. And then on Saturday, I was working with Caroline Rice. So Caroline Rice is a journalist. She's a life coach, an author author she's also got a column in a national newspaper in the UK called Happy Mondays it's the Daily Express but she also has this pure coaching academy and it's for people to go and be trained to become life coaches and um, we've got 18 people I'm her co-coach so I support her and uh, we've got 18 wonderful life coaches on the program really interesting people come from all over the uk they fly in from different countries as well and after every session after every saturday of course caroline and i go to the bar wow. <laughs> that's always good so what cocktail did you have well i didn't have because i'd had the cocktail and later on in that evening so after rich hot and spiritual is over we all go to the bar or people who want to stay behind yeah. go to the bar and i had uh, an aperol spritz so i decided i wasn't going to have an aperol spritz so i had a really lovely gin and tonic oh god it was so good i could have drank more but i thought i'm driving i can't i can get away with one but that's it in this country you're allowed to have one or two spirits but i just try and just have one yeah but it was it was amazing and then yesterday it was i was really tired from friday and saturday because it's the nerves that you have in the build up to the event because you want it to go well you want everyone to enjoy themselves you want people to network and for it to be a great experience for everyone so yeah so that was it so at the end i was pretty zonked yesterday so i was just looking funny enough at handbags <laughs> oh. yeah I love handbags. You can and never have enough handbags. That's that's a that's oh, a really oh, good yeah. Thing. And my my niece, I was talking to her, and she's just about to buy herself another new Chanel handbag. And I looked at it, and it was three thousand four hundred pounds. Right. So her husband's buying her that, mm -hmm. and uh, for their anniversary, which they've just had. And um, I said to her, "Oh, I want to get a new handbag, but I can't." really my money at the moment doesn't stretch to that Chanel type 
of purchase. So I was having a look at Mulberry, which is really lovely. Mm. And I was trying to figure out which one I would like. And she was going, get the dark red one. I said, okay, <laughs> I've got to sell a bit more first and get some new clients before I do that. But that's on my hit list. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah. Judy's just said that she's never had an April spritz. So um, oh, the next one time you. you'll have to, um, we'll have to have um, a cocktail tasting maybe um, at the end of October because I'm doing sober October this month. So I've not had any alcohol since the first of October. And um, one of the benefits of that is that I've lost a whole kilogram in weight. That's so um, yeah, I weighed myself at the beginning. So I thought I'll just see whether not drinking will make a difference. It's only been like. It's one week. Day. One week I've lost one kilogram. Well, that so. doesn't happen to me. I can tell you that everyone right now. I can go without <laughs> alcohol for months. Can't go without <laughs> cake for months, though, or chocolate. That's probably the downfall. Yeah, I maybe. Alcohol I'm not overly going to lose any weight whatsoever. Well, different, Anita. Pardon? Do you feel any different? Um, I do feel different. I think I've had, I mean, I don't drink that much anyway, but I think just the fact that I do, I do like a glass of wine to wind down in the evening sometimes. And, you know, like, cause once I've had one glass, I just shut the computer and then that's it. So I think the last week I've had a bit of a detox and I've been waking up feeling actually worse than I have, than I did when I was having a drink. But, um, I think it's just my body getting rid of all the chemicals and all the rubbish and stuff like that. And they did say, because I'm doing it for the Macmillan um, Cancer Support Fund, they did say that you get a real sugar kick because you're missing the sugar that's in the alcohol and things like that. So I have been quite careful about not eating a lot of sugary stuff. Mm. Um, And I am quite... I'm quite health conscious anyway because of my sport um so I think just the joining of the two have just helped um and I feel less bloated and less sort of clunky if that makes sense you know less heavy and stuff so um we'll see what I am next week after another week of no alcohol um and um (laughs) and maybe Carol we'll have to do it together one time a whole month without any alcohol and then we just have a good easily do alcohol for me it's the sugar or maybe we should have a, a whole month of no cake and raise funds for something or a whole month of no chocolate and do I would to be chocolate. honest I can do that I can do no cake or no chocolate but then all I do is turn my attention on the other thing yeah so if I do no chocolate I'll just have a bit more cake if I do yeah. no cake I'll have a bit more chocolate I really need to do it all yeah, yeah. And I've tried to do it, you know, because like when Lent comes along, I try and do this most years and I get to day 21 of doing it. No, like I have natural sugar in fruit, but yeah. no, it's no crisps, no chocolate, no cake. And it is obviously the toxins then just want to come out of my body because every single time I get ill. And a lot of the time I end up throwing up Mm. and then my sugar level really hits rock bottom. And it's very hard for me to get that energy. And that's where I find that I go back to the sugar again to get that bit of energy. But every single time I'm normally going, yeah, this is so easy. This is so easy. Of course, the sugar's still in my blood. And then it's like day 21. It's probably all out of my system. And I just crash. So maybe next, yeah. So maybe next time look for some alternative yeah well my niece said to me or you know my niece said to me to have orange juice well that's got quite a lot of sugar in though orange juice well she said it but like get good orange juice she said if you know it's coming up get the good orange juice to drink yeah that's Uh, okay plan for it so if you know it's going to happen around 21 days have the strategies in place like orange juice or pineapple or mango or kind of fruit with and something that you enjoy i think is important Well, I like pineapple and mango. I love them. Yeah. Suzanne just said that she could help with that. So I don't know. Um, maybe we should have like maybe one of the one of the Monday morning shakedowns. We should talk about um, dealing with cravings and things like that. Yeah. Might- maybe we could have a little panel yeah. of people, and we can talk about that. Just want to shout out to Jess Baker who's watching. Hi, Jess. Really great that you're here. So that is a fantastic conversation. Shall I just give you now some tips around networking? Yeah, so Carol's prepared some tips for networking. So we thought we'd share that with you before we um, 
we come to an end. So, Carol, would you like to share your tips? Yeah. We just like to give you some little actionable tips that you can take away. And it's also to give you sort of like a flavor of some of the stuff that we cover in our um my entrepreneurs club of course Anita normally does something around tech um but today we just thought we would do one and yes. so I got the lucky straw that I could carry on talking to you <laughs> so, um I just thought that I would talk about follow-up from networking especially as I've just run rich hot and spiritual it just seemed really really uh, appropriate so the thing is with networking is if you're going to network then it is absolutely crucial that you follow up because what you've got to think about is that you've already invested your time. You've invested your time in traveling there. You've invested your time in actually staying in the meeting and engaging. And then you sort of like invest in your time in traveling back. And even if it's just 20 minutes down the road, you know, by the time you add on the networking and maybe you get there a bit early and maybe you stay a little bit late to have some conversations with people, you're looking at least three hours, if not four. And my networking, Rich Hot and Spiritual, it is a four hour networking meeting. I've deliberately made it longer so you get more time to talk uh, to people. So can you imagine that you invest like if you come to mine, you're traveling there, spending four hours and then traveling back. And I know somebody like, say, for example, Julie, who lives in Peterborough, you know, that's going to take a whole day of her time. So can you imagine if you go to any networking group? and you invest that time, whether it's a whole day, whether it's half a day of your time, and you come back and you do nothing. Mm. That is really, really crazy. You know, follow up is really important because it's the start of a relationship. And if you already know the person, then it's your opportunity to strengthen that relationship. But follow up doesn't mean, yeah, I'll get to it in several weeks time. You know, that's not following up. Follow up means that ideally within 24 hours of that event, you are going to follow up with that person. Now, sometimes it's a bit hard to do 24 hours. You know, you've got the weekend or you suddenly know that you've got a couple of days where you're out of the office and your time's all taken up. But, you know, 24 hours to say maybe, you know, two or three days after the event, that's the time frame in which you want to follow up with people. And the idea is that you want to get a meeting. Now, that can be a face to face meeting or it can be a um, online meeting. So, for example, when I was at Kari's um, Mums Unlimited Amersham event, I met up. Well, I agreed a one to one with one lady there and we did it there and then we got our diaries out and put the date in. And then the second lady, we did it via email. And again, that email came within 24 hours. She sent the email to me and we've got uh, a date to meet up. And although I'm a great believer in trying to do stuff online, you know, if I can meet the people because they're close by and I can do it all on the same day, you know, that just makes it nicer for me. It means that I'm out of the office for a day, which is great. So this Friday, I've got two meetings. I've got two one-to-one meetings. And it's the start of really getting to know those people. Now, when you go for your meeting, make sure that you go prepared. You know, for example, I the ladies that I'm meeting this week, they're both business ladies. So I will look at their website. I will look at their social media because I want to get a better sense of who they are. Now, their websites might not be up to date or they might be getting refreshed at the moment. Um, but I can also look at their social media. And as I said, it's just going to give me an idea. Um, and if for any reason you are meeting someone who doesn't have a website or who is not on social media, just ask yourself, does anybody else know this person that you could just ask a few questions to? Now, OK, you don't want to do it in a stalky way or you don't want the person you're asking the questions to feel like they're being interrogated, you know, but you're just trying to get a little bit more of a sense about that person. And if for any reason 
they're not they don't have a website they're not on social media and you don't know anybody who knows them make sure you go with some questions to ask them to get an understanding of their background because when you start off speaking with somebody what you're looking for is to make connection where can you connect throughout you know and sometimes it can be the most simplest things like you live in the same area you've looked at their website and that shade of pink or blue or green or whatever they use is one of your favorites. And it just, you really like it or it's full of energy. And if you give that piece of feedback to somebody, they're going to feel really good about it. The vibration is going to lift, you know? And when you're having that meeting with that person, you might not be actually selling. Now, I know if anybody does my sales mastery course, I always tell them every conversation is a sales conversation if you know how to do it properly. But sometimes you go and you meet somebody and you really are just getting to know them because selling is all about having a conversation. It's not about, okay, I'm going to close the sale now. You know, all of that just makes us feel really uncomfortable. If you are having a conversation in the right way, the person you want to work with you closes the deal for you. You don't even have to close it if you know how to do it properly. So during the meeting, what um, it gives you is the opportunity to find out if the person's the right fit for you. You can find out, you know, do you like them? Do they like you? Do they seem to have, you know, some really good values? You know, and you do that by asking smart questions. So if you go and have a meeting with somebody and you're just doing all the talking, you're not going to find anything out about them. But if you go there and you hardly talk and you just ask smart questions, which enables them to open up, you're really going to learn a lot about your potential client. And even if you, they don't become a client, you've sort of like gathered a whole load of information, which you've been able to do face to face and interact with, which is the best way to do any research is by having that one to one conversation with somebody. And if you think, do you know what, I really like this person and I would like to work with them, just agree the next steps. What are you going to do? So don't walk away from the meeting and just say, OK, bye. It was really lovely speaking to you. I really enjoyed our conversation. No, don't do that. Make sure that you agree on the next steps. The next step might be, look, it was really lovely. I'd love to have another coffee with you. What would you like to meet up again in, say, about two months time? You know, or three months time. Put it out there, you know. If they say no, which I've never come across anybody who has said that, then, you know, you sort of like that no there and then that even if you think they're right for you, they might think that you are not right for them. Well, that's OK. There isn't a problem with that. It just means that you move on to the next person and you're not wasting your time, you know. And sometimes we think somebody might be a good fit, but for whatever reason, they don't think the same of us and that's okay because not everybody is right for us but it doesn't mean that we're not good at what we do it doesn't mean that we don't have the right skills and all the right attributes to go out and work with the next person so don't ever take any of that personally because if you do it will stop you from progressing um so agree your next steps and your next steps could be let's have a call let's have a meeting or it could be something as simple like this. You know, I was reading that art, this article the other day. I think you would be really interested in it. Let me send it to you. Or there's a po couple of podcasts that I listen to. I think you'd love them. I'll send you the links. Agree on something because then you've got the doors open all the time. And then over a period of time, that person gets to know you. And then eventually they become a client. There is a quick right. speed it up, of course. But, you know, if you're just taking it nice and gentle, that's what happens. Well, so great tips. tips. Thanks, Carol. Yeah, really, really good tips. And um, lots of people have been commenting. Liz says she's booked a one-to-one -one after your um, Rich Hot and Spiritual as well. So she's, get, she's got one this afternoon. So yeah. it is really, really um, essential to carry on the conversation that you have when you're at a network. Because sometimes you don't get very much time. 
So actually, like you say, getting your diary out, just making an appointment or even a Zoom call. You can have a one to one over Zoom so that you don't have to travel um, yeah. if you're too far away. It makes um, a lot of sense. Yeah. Or you're busy. If you're really busy and you think, do you know what? I just don't have the time to do these one to one meetings. Yeah then suggest that you have a Zoom call because ideally you want to be having conversations with your ideal clients every week. Yes. And I just want to do a shout out for <laughs> Liz because she did say, I've got a one-to-one -one booked, re-sparkling synergy later today. So Liz, one of our members, is starting up a new networking group in Beaconsfield. So again, mm -hmm. if you live in and around that area of Beaconsfield, please check out Liz's networking group, which is called Sparkling Synergy. And it kicks off. Do you know what day it kicks off? Is it the, it's the 25th of October. That's it, I remember. Very good. Okay. Very good. Okay. Okay, everyone. I okay, hope that's it. Thank you, Carrie, for joining us today. It's been really interesting to learn more about reflexology and your journey into reflexology as well. I mean, living in the Cayman Islands must have been amazing. Um, it was pretty good. And thank you very much for having me. That's great. Thank you. And don't forget to join us next Monday for episode seven episode seven of our Monday morning shakedown It's every Monday at 10 o'clock. Now, I will be putting um, a little tech video into the membership about the watch channel on Facebook because Facebook have allowed you to um, choose what you see in watch. So our videos are on there at the moment. And if you want to see them and you can't tune in for any reason, you want to watch them on your mobile, then you can see them. Oh, Kelly's doggy's come to say Look. Oh. Yeah, we love pets in my entrepreneurs yeah. club. We We've did. got, um, I've got mine. They've actually calmed down and settled down. What's the dog's name, Carrie? This is Little Mo. Oh, Little, little Mo. Mo. Hi, Little Mo. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> no, that might start her off. They don't, I don't think dogs can, can, uh, what, what's the word? Work <laughs> out the screen. I don't think they actually have that intuition of, of interactions on the screen. I think they can if it's a flat screen and it's high definition. Yeah, and, and a dog's barking on it, obviously. Yeah. Bark. Because I've seen a few videos of the little dogs dancing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think Zoom, they just don't get, because mine don't do anything either. They just... Oh, uh, really, on Zoom. Maybe it's not high definition enough. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Don't they recognise the voice, they'll react, because uh, she used to belong to my sister. If my sister comes on FaceTime and calls her, she kind of goes, what's going oh, on? Where is she? Okay. Oh, that's really mm. interesting. Yeah, they never forget, do they? Yeah. Um, animals never forget their, their sort of like when they were babies and stuff. Um, so just a reminder, the doors are closing to my entrepreneurs club tomorrow at midnight. So if you want to get, if you want to join on our special introduction rate of fifteen pound a month, we would love to have you in here. We've got lots of new members and we've got some men joining as well. So we've got, um, so it's not just the female only group. It is open to both genders or any gender. So it's great and you know come in see how you love it and um, we would love to have you there so thank you everyone for joining us please carry on leaving any comments that you want and if you are watching the replay if you have any questions about reflexology don't forget to reach out to Carrie she can be found on Carrie Taylor reflexology on Facebook and obviously Carol and I can be found on our my entrepreneurs club page and also on our own Facebook pages okay thanks very much everyone and we'll see thank you, you everyone. Week, monday morning shakedown bye have everyone. a wonderful week bye, bye. thank you